I wanted to um, introduce myself. My name is Darla Van Horn. I'm a supervisor in student advocacy, um, and I'm excited to uh, be uh, moderating this event today. Um, I think it's an awesome opportunity for students to connect and to talk about um, various subjects or things that um, they that have helped them on campus or that they may be interested in and get feedback from each other. So um, and stay tuned because in the future we will um, continue to have some additional uh, student panel events. We are in the process of um, working on those dates and pulling that all together. And I want to say thank you to Jeff for organizing that and pulling us all together and keeping us straight. So um, today for our pa student panelists, we have BT, Elaney, Hadil, and Angela. And I hope I'm saying is that Hadil, is that correct? Yes, it is. Oh. OK, wonderful. Um, and what I'm going to ask each one of you to do, and I, I'll um, introduce you and then let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, basically, how many years or how long you've been here at Columbus State and um, what your major is and um, anything else that you think is important for us to know or you'd like to share. So. Uh, to get started, I will, Angela, I can see you first on my screen, so I'm going to start with you and let you introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Angela Sloan, and I am a student Goodwill Ambassador for Columbus State. This is my second semester, and um, some fun facts about me. I have two children, a five-year-old and an eight-year-old, so I'm also homeschooling, and I also have two jobs. Ugh, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, Brianna or BT, you're next. Um, hi, I haven't seen you for a while since we're not in the office. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. Um, I'm the one in the chat with the puppy. I will keep y'all up to date on the puppy. I should know tomorrow or Friday. Um, I am getting a veterinary technology degree along with an associate of science. I have two semesters left. Woohoo! I'm almost done. Um, I am a member of the Cougar Crew, and I've been a part of the Cougar Crew for a little over a year now. Wonderful. My fun fact was the puppy. <laughs> Congratulations on almost being done. That's good news. Um, Eleni, I'll ask you to go next. Hi, I'm Eleni. I am a peer advocate here at Columbus State. Uh, this would probably be my second semester working with peer advocacy. I am currently in my sixth year at Columbus State as a student. I have earned an associate's degree. I have also earned a certification in ASL and Deaf Studies. And currently, I'm now working towards my degree in ASL Interpreting. Uh, fun fact about me, I have 17 tattoos. Only thing I can think of. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And Hadil. If you could introduce yourself um, and tell us a little about yourself as well. Yes, my name is Hadiel. Um, this is my second year at Columbus State. Um, I'm a student ambassador. Um, my major here is Associate of Science. I'm hoping to um, transfer to our state uh, to be an engineer. So it's like one semester left for that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's good. Congratulations on that and best of luck to you. Thank you. Um, so I will go ahead. Jeff, is there anything you want to share with us about Student Success Week or anything um, before I start asking our questions to our panelists? Anything I have to say can wait until the end. So I'm going to say go ahead, Darla. OK, wonderful. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and um, ask the questions and then um, maybe it'll be easier if I ask if like go th like I did, just did go through the student that way everybody has a chance to answer the question um, and so I'll ask you as you show up on my screen <laughs> um, so the first question we have is uh, we all know that making new friends can be challenging virtually what is one thing you have done to um, try to connect to your classmates in your online classes and I'll go ahead and start with Angela 
Um, so one of the things that I have done is use the discussion boards and we will write back and forth to each other. And then we will also um, sometimes give each other our, our numbers or our emails. And that way we can call each other outside of class or text outside of class and we can connect with each other that way. You're muted. Ah, Eleni, I'm like, why is Eleni signing at me? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, BT. And the funny part is I was looking and BT's muted. So you're saying you're muted. And I'm like, yeah, BT, you're muted. <laughs> I am so sorry. Um, go ahead, BT. <laughs> um. I have actually a few in person classes this semester, but we only need about one day a week. So one of the things we've actually done is we got our, our teachers permission and we created a discord for our whole entire major actually. And our teacher allowed us to share it via email with the other students. So we're talking to second years, we're talking to first years. Um, and we have like different groups and everything. Some of us have decided to contact outside of class. Um, we don't have a, as many discussion boards, but we also have used the discussion boards to try and contact each other. But one of the things that I've done personally in my classes without discussion boards is I'll ask the teacher if they're willing to turn on the email our students feature. And I'll email like all the students like, hey, my name is so and so. Here's the times I available if anyone wants to do a study group or things of that sort. Um, so far in like two of my classes, we've we have made study groups and stuff for those of us that had like good times and things of that sort. Um, also, the Facebook group, I've met a few people on the Facebook group and like I've met them and like we've had study groups and stuff like that too. Wow, that's awesome. I love the idea of um, them connecting you to all students who have been in the program that's a great resource because that's also a great network for when you graduate too or just in finding jobs and I love that idea. Um, all right, Hadil, how about you? So for me, um, so um, I really struggle with online classes. So on March when we were stress spring to online classes and everything. So I was struggling in my um, math class actually and um, so I so I talked to my supervisor and he was like telling me to email students. You can find the email through Blackboard, all the student emails there. So I, I emailed the professor and said if I'm allowed. He said it's OK, so I emailed them right away. And we did have a Discord chat and we all helped each other and we all passed the class actually with a good grade. So. Yeah. I was muted again. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> um, and um, Eleni, you're last. <laughs> you're next. Um, to stay in contact with my classmates, uh, we actually use several different apps uh, that are available. Uh, we use uh, an app called GroupMe, and it you actually can uh, prioritize what groups these are. So, like for each of our individual classes each student is a part of that group chat and so if you have that person's phone number or you know people who know have that number then the person can create a group for that particular class and so that's how we usually keep in contact with one another if we decide hey let's do some uh practicing before we have that test then um, somebody will create a zoom and then uh, send that link to the group me chat and then uh, we'll all be participating in this in the Zoom in the practice if we would like. Also, we use an app called Marco Polo, which definitely is very beneficial because in my program I do have uh, a few deaf instructors. So having so being able to communicate with one another via a phone call is obviously not possible, but being able to sign with them with Marco Polo is very beneficial. It basically is a video chat recording that you send to a person or sometimes to a group. And so these are just a few ways that we've been able to stay in contact with one another. Awesome. Um, before the next question, I just wanted to say that we don't, you know, feel free to chime in at, 
as Jeff put in the chat, you can put your questions in the chat. You can also raise your hand, um, and I'm watching that. That uh, Feel free to ask any questions as we're going along, and um, we can continue. So with that being said, the next question that we have for the panelists is, what is one virtual event you have participated in that you would recommend? Angela? So, um, last semester when um, I had first started, they did the first four weeks, kind of like what's going on now. And I learned that there was a thing called the Generation One Trailblazers. And a lot of my family have not been to college, so I'm new to this. And then I'm also on my own because they can't tell me what to do. So, with that, um, that kind of is a group to set you up and get a mentor and they can show you how to do everything. And then another group that I really liked was the Women's Connection, which I just started this semester, so I'm fairly new, but the very first event was awesome. So I'm really excited to see where that goes. Wonderful, thank you. Um, yes, I would encourage you to um, check out the mentorship programs that the college um, offers. Uh, got for first generation students as well as our women's connection, men's connection. There's also military and veteran services, um, mentoring group. There's a former fo uh, for foster scholar network for former foster youth. Um, and I would encourage everybody to check those out. Um, Hadil. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah. So one virtual event I attend was CLCO, to leadership conference that's held at Columbus State every year. It was an amazing keynote. Like there was like an amazing keynote speakers there. Um, we actually, as a student ambassador, we the one planned it. And every year there's like new keynote speakers, and it will teach you about how to be a leader. And it will leave you. You will leave with the mission and how you're gonna like you know lead. So it's amazing a conference that I like encourage everyone to attend, and it's held every year. On November. Wonderful. Thank you, Hadil. Uh, BT, how about you? Um, I've actually attended some of the first four week, uh, first four weeks. That's a tongue twister. Events that have been taking place this semester. Um, I would definitely recommend the one about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is one of those things that you kind of hear everyone talking about, like you should make one. It's a great way for connections, but for so often it's kind of confusing when you first get on. Like, how does this work? Is it like Facebook? Is it like Instagram? How do I work this thing? So I think it's a great thing that everyone should probably attend one of those meetings. And I also am a part of GOT as well. So I love GOT. You can meet a lot of cool people and GOT also has a mentorship program as well. Um, I signed up for a mentor and I literally said I need someone who will tell me to like stop and calm down. And that's exactly what she does. So it's great. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. And Eleni, how about you? I've attended a few meetings. My most recent meeting that I attended that I would um, recommend people going to is one concerning the positive change for um, Columbus State. Uh, this was concerning sexual harassment at Columbus State, just because this is a topic that I think that obviously is very uncomfortable for a lot of people. Not many people like to talk about it, but it is seriously, it is a very serious issue that needs to be discussed. And as much as you know, we we like to think it doesn't. It does happen here at Columbus State, and uh, it's a great way just to know who to contact, who your resources are. Um, I've had my I've had my experience of students coming to me with their own personal uh, questions and their own personal stories, and not knowing where to go or who to talk to. So that um, particular meeting helped me immensely as far as where to guide a student or what the next step is to help somebody in that situation. So I definitely recommend going. Wonderful, thank you. Um, I see that Susan has um, oh. her hand. Oh. Hi, I just had a question for the students and that is, I'm Susan Goschel and I work in student engagement and leadership. And we often try to plan events for students, not only educational, but also fun social events. 
and we've been holding things like Jackbox Games events. Um, we have one coming up on February 11th from 12 to 2. And I'm curious what other kind of social or community connection, you know, connecting with other people in our Columbus State community events the students would like to see and if they have certain times. Um, we haven't offered very many in the evening, but we are very open to offering them in the evening or on the weekends if students are interested in coming. Great question. And I, I, I too am interested in time frame because we're trying to plan other events and knowing the best time of day is very helpful too. Thank you, Susan. How um, do any of you have an answer to that or a response that might be helpful? Uh, I have one. I know that um, I know that it has happened for student employment, but um, maybe like Netflix parties and stuff. I know it's a lot of students would like try to interact with those. Um, and one of the ways you can try and figure out times is that a lot of social medias do allow polls. So you could offer polls and then maybe different viewing times with how things kind of are right now. I know some students are more available like either early morning or late at night and weekends are kind of more so homework based. Um, and I also know that some students are trying to figure out ways to connect with other people. So maybe if there's any way you can uh, organize like maybe online study groups or things of that sort, like maybe making, I know there was an organization for uh, beginning psychology. I remember my psychology teacher putting me in it. It was like psychology, like tutoring an organization and things of that sort. So maybe you could do like, oh, here's the organization for like tutoring and you could do like a group study room where it's like maybe an instructor or two or maybe somebody who's already an alumni um, could help with like maybe studying or tutoring or maybe just like a meet and greet thing. Um, where people can like talk and like go to breakouts and things like that kind of like a virtual party um i've seen a couple of videos and i've attended some virtual parties where they did like breakouts and come togethers um so maybe something like that would be cool and it can happen via teams or like blackboard and zoom i think also have the ability to do breakout rooms as well awesome thank you bt for sharing and then something that I was going to say also is um, maybe you can offer it twice, like once in the morning and once in the evening. That way that like some people work during the day and some people do their stuff at night or some people will do their stuff while kids are in school and they'll be able to come to the evening one. Wonderful. Anybody else want to chime in on that? Well, thank you everyone for some feedback on that and thank you susan for a great question i know we all have that question when we're planning events so that was helpful um what is one question or i'm sorry what is one piece of advice you would give to a student hesitant or nervous about connecting with other students just do it <laughs> go ahead eleni I see your hand up. <laughs> You're muted. Oh, her computer's not not working. She, it's stuck. She can't turn it off. We'll move to the next person real quick and then see. Um, BT or Hadil, do either one of you? Yeah, just do it like uh, like she said, it's like, you know, you will waste a lot of time trying to figure everything on your own. So like having a group, like uh, creating group chat will help a lot. Everyone will help each other. If you don't understand a problem, other students will explain it. And again, guys can go and move forward and help each other in that class and pass it. Wonderful, thank you. Eleni says she's better now. Um, Yeah, I obviously I agree with everybody. Just like I think I'm I think one of the biggest reasons people don't reach out to other students is just the intimidation. Like, oh, I don't want to seem like I'm stupid or I'm not understanding what's going on. Believe me, everybody, every student who steps foot on Columbus State campus has felt like that at one point or another. So you are not alone. So if anything, it helps you feel more um, heard 
feel, lets you feel more included. Like, okay, so it's not just me. You know, college is a big transition for a lot of people, uh, whether you are just out of high school or whether it's your first time back in so many years. So it's okay to, you know, work up the courage and finally do it. So. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. One of the great things like about group chats is that if you ask a question, depending on like what group chat app slash device thingy my body is doing names for it you're using, other students can like directly reply to it or they can do reactions to it. Like for instance, our um, the Discord that we have for the vet tech program, we separate it into different classes. Each class has different like this is like pharmacology quiz, this is pharmacology homework. And then we have a general board where it's mostly animal pictures to be perfectly honest. But we'll ask a question and then like I asked a question about scrubs like because I had ordered a scrub top mine didn't have the logo on it I asked hey has anybody else experienced this and other people could reply directly to it they could do thumbs up there's different emojis they could use um so if you're able to do a group chat I would say that's probably kind of like the most safest comfiest zone um because that's how I started talking to a lot of my classmates because my message could get lost in everyone else and I was still interacting and people if they read my message they could reply to me and I could feel included but I could do it at kind of like my pace um and don't be afraid to ask a question to your other classmates um because even the classmates who may seem like they're the smartest person in the class, they even they have questions. Um, one of the things that my class has done, we have two people that love to like, um, they point blank say like, we're the pickers on the teachers. So we'll like make a list of questions and they're the ones that go to the teachers because they know how to word the question correctly to get the answer we want. And then they relay it back to us. So it's kind of like telephone, if that makes sense. I hope it did. Wonderful, thank you. I see Eleni has her hand up again too. Just uh, your story, uh, VT, reminded me of a scenario that I had in class once was that um, my teacher expressed that there is in this program, in the program that I'm in interpreting, um, that there is some sort of, that there is some competitiveness that goes on, that there will become, a, there will come a time where me and my classmates will become colleagues and you know we'll be like fighting each other for you know certain assignments or going to certain jobs and things like that i had to tell them you know i don't feel any sort of competition or i don't feel any sort of um competitiveness between us at all in fact i feel the most accepted and the most supported in this program that i felt in a very long time so if i can at any point help a student feel that way whether it's in the program that i'm currently in or any program at all even anything at columbus state if i can help them feel that um accepted then i will definitely help them i will definitely do that thank you eleni i see that um is it taj it's coming up as tj on my screen has a question go ahead Hi, it's Ty. My camera's not Hi. working, so I can't turn it on. But um, I just wanted to touch based on what the question you had put in the chat. Um, one advice I would give to a student that's hesitant, because I've I've always been like that. Uh, one thing I had to learn is to like I don't remember who said it, but just do it. Um, because I've always learned that a closed mouth don't get fed. So if you don't say anything, no one's going to know that you need the help or the assistance that you are seeking. No one's going to know that you're struggling with something unless you speak up and say it. So I would, like I said, just do it. Another thing I would say is do it in fear. Um, because either way, you're you're speaking out and you're doing the yes you're scared yes you may be hesitant of doing it but do it in fear um i had to do that a lot of times um i recently just did that earlier before we got on here uh i reached out to someone i was talking to and we sat down for like 10 20 minutes and mapped out a uh, a plan for the week and the upcoming weeks so focus on how to get it organized because i'm just recently getting back into the swing of school and everything like that so 
um, I needed that one person to be my accountability partner. Like, hey, I'm getting back into school. I like basically starting over. I don't know what to do. Can you please help me? Like, and she me back was like, hey, I read your email, but call me. I better rather talk to you and like over the phone than to sit back and email back and forth. And you may get that one person that is willing to call you or like to email back and forth. But either way, do it in fear because, like I said earlier, you never know. You could be helping someone else. Um, like BT could have a question and she's scared to answer, but ask it. But if I ask the question, she could have that same question. You could always help someone else that is having the same concerns that you may be having. Thank you, Ty. I agree with that. Um, because oftentimes we think our question, we're the only one that might have that question, but I find that a lot of times if I'm confused, somebody else is too. So great feedback. And Angela, go ahead. And I also find that once you do just do it a couple times, it kind of takes that power and that fear away from it. And you're able to ask that question without being scared anymore. Yep, you kind of get used to asking those questions. Wonderful, so um, I love this feedback, thank you. And I love that Ty, you're given feedback and input and I, I appreciate everybody jumping in. Um, I'm gonna go on to the next question unless somebody has other questions that they want. Um, I wanna do a check-in to see if there are specific questions or any concerns that somebody wants to ask that we might be able to help. Um, our panelists might be able to help guide you on before we go to the next question. Okay, so the next question is um, is actually directed at Eleni, but I also think that um, members on our panel can also answer these questions because I know that in different various areas you may come upon this and are probably assisting other students and providing feedback as well. But the question is, in the peer advocate role, what are you seeing as the most common student barriers to their success right now and what resources are you recommending for them? Uh, at this current time, the biggest barrier that I'm seeing with students is regarding financial. Uh, I've had many students come to me uh, just in the most recent weeks, and I understand it's the beginning of the semester, so it's pretty common, um, just talking about like, oh, I thought that I had this money, and then it turns out I don't, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pay for these courses. I'm thinking about dropping courses. And the best way that I, I try to help them is by offering them either financial aid, loans, grants, whatever they can possibly um, get applied for and then also uh, payment plans. I myself have been on uh, payment plans through Columbus State. It's very helpful, it is very beneficial uh, if you are somebody who's very dedicated to school but just don't ha but ha struggle with having the funds on you at that current time. I know there's been a lot of talk, there's been so many students asking me, oh when does the the CARES Refund Act go back into play. And I, I, I unfortunately have to tell them that at this time it's no longer available. So I, I wish that there was more access to money to financial wellness for students. Um, but aside from financial aid and aside from payment plans, there's really not a whole lot out there. Thank you. Yeah, that is one of the biggest things that we seem to see. Um, and, you know, at this time, we don't know of any CARES funding or any information, but as the college becomes aware of it, we'll uh, roll that out to students and, and students will be um, informed. Um, anybody else? Are there questions that you're seeing um, through Cougar Crew, through, um, you know, anything else that you're mm -hmm. saying, oh, yeah, that seems to keep coming up? And, and what, how are you helping students who have those questions? I've seen a lot of students talking about like technology issues or like not having like reliable access to internet or things of that sort. And my number one advice is talk to your teacher. 
because a lot of teachers, they're willing to make compromises. They're, they have resources, they have advice that they can give you, um, especially if you're in like a very specific major or anything like that. Um, there are some scholarships and stuff that are starting to come to light just because of COVID. People are realizing that COVID has really affected students, so they're making scholarships and stuff for that. There's grants, there's loans, there's technology loans from different companies and things of that sort just because of COVID. So, for instance, I talked to my teacher and I was like, hey, I'm a point blank honest. I'm having financial issues because of COVID. Um, I don't always have access to reliable internet, especially since my mom's working at home now and she requires a lot of the internet. So she was like, OK, here's the resources I can give you. If you can't get a hotspot from the school, here's some other places that are doing hotspots. Um, it may be a bit of a budget thing, but here this is. Here are some scholarships that are happening right here, right now because of this. My teacher was willing to do extra research because she had access to certain doors that are closed for me as a student. And your teachers, they want to help you. And even if it seems like a really weird question for a teacher, go ahead and ask it. Um, and don't be afraid to ask other students that you're comfortable with. That's the big thing. If you're comfortable with those other students, um, financial issues is a big thing in the vet tech program in general, because when COVID hit and our classes got stretched out, a lot of us are no longer eligible for financial aid because of it. So all of us are kind of having the same issues. So we're all comfortable talking about it. If you have a classmate or if you have a friend that you're comfortable talking to, especially if they're like student employment or you can't be friends with teachers after you graduate from their class, you can become their friend. Um, but definitely just like start asking questions and asking for resources. And if you join a mentorship program, don't be afraid to ask and talk to your mentor about it because your mentor probably has like a bunch of extra resources with the company that they're working with that you wouldn't be able to get yourself really. So definitely just keep asking questions um, and don't be afraid to Google and ask different things. And um, a couple businesses and a couple people at work are capable of doing their stuff at work. I have a friend, she takes her tablet to work and like her work lets her stay like an extra hour or two to do her schoolwork because they know like she can't always do it at home. Um, so talk to your job and ask if they're willing to let you do that. Or if you work at like a fast food place, come in early before your shift, stay after your shift and do work as well so that you don't have to worry about being late for work as well. Thank you, BT. Anybody else want to give any feedback before we go to the next question? OK, um, Terry actually put a message. Terry Blaney put a message in the chat um, to check your CSCC email um, and this Columbus State Cares web page also for um, funds. And as they come available, that, that that page will be updated. So um, with that being said, on the same topic of resources, what are some good resources that you think students aren't aware of that you think would be helpful to them? BT, you kind of touched on that. Um, I love the idea of, you know, work. If you're working at a fast food place, being able to go in and go early and sit there and do your homework. Um, any other resources or um, ideas that you think students might not be aware of or even staff that could be helpful that we could um, share with people or students. The online tutoring through Blackboard is really helpful, like it's free. Uh, I think one time I heard someone say that you already paid for it, the student already paid for it at the beginning of the semester. So why don't you use it? Like it's, they are available days and nights. And one time I accessed it at 11 p.m. and I found a tutor there and it helped me because they were like, I think in different state or something like that. So like they were so hopeful and it was like, we, uh, he walked me through where I'm struggling and we were like, uh, we ended up like, uh, like I ended up having the, um, the results of the problem that I'm like struggling with. And so like um, it's really helpful. So like take advantage of it and it's it's free sources and for all subjects. So yes. Thank you. That's a re that's really great input. I didn't realize you could get on at any time. Thank you. Yes, Angela. <laughs> um, another resource that is free for us is um, right now the counseling services and with COVID and everybody's struggling and having a hard time so you can reach out to them right now and they have some drop-in hours that's free as well yes 
Wonderful, thank you. Okay, anybody, oh, BT, go ahead. Okay, um, I know that like a bunch of students are having trouble printing and stuff. There was an email that went out autumn semester. I think it still applies for spring, but um, it was that you could basically send what you needed printed to like the school library and stuff, and you can go and get it picked up so that they will print it for you and just pick it up. That's a really good thing. But also, um, there are some places, like I know FedEx had it. I don't know if they still do, but they did have a student account where printing and stuff was a bit discounted. Um, it would have to be double checked, but the it is pretty cheap printing and you can still print things at public libraries as well um where like i think a certain amount of copies are free because of covid but also public libraries do have like partnerships with columbia state and they do like have things that you can use there as well um and they even some of the textbooks and like extra resources are available at your main public library branch and you can get things requested to your library branch and you can pick them up um so that's all, always an awesome resource you can use as well. Plus the library is free, like the free Wi-Fi still works in the parking lot. Yeah, that's a great resource. I will um, encourage everyone, if you're gonna go to a library that's close to you or you are thinking about a public library, make sure that you look it up on the internet or call them to make sure they're open because not all libraries are open um, in, in the community. Some of them are offering like drive-by or like um, community, stops in the parking lot where you can get books or or um, stuff like that the other thing speaking of library um, wanted to share that our uh, library has um, a chat tool here at columbus state so if you go to columbus state's main web page you can either type in library in the search section or resources for students um, i believe it's under there as well and our library has a chat chat section with librarians available to help you during business hours. Um, and they also can give you resources and support. Their, their website's pretty phenomenal. Um, also, if you're struggling in, to find a book or um, a resource for your classes, they can assist you with that as well. So great tip um, and great feedback, everybody. That's awesome, thank you. Um, the next question is, what are some tips you can offer for communicating with your instructors when you have issues um, or concerns? I think just explain your situation to them. Um, they are so helpful, understanding. Like um, I remember when a class um, I had a really bad um, like um, coughing, you know, everything. So I was in like be able to turn up the test that's been asked for me. So I contact him and I explained my situation, everything. He was so understanding. He actually um, like um, rescheduled some of the tasks to later times so I can do them. Um, and actually one time I contact him for like when I'm struggling with a um, problem. We had a, like a Zoom call at 9 p.m. because like I'm only I'm always working. So like night at the night time is like the time that I'm usually um, it's, I do like a homework and stuff. So I contact him at 9 p.m. He respond right away and he like we did a well, Zoom call and he was like ask, explain everything so I can like be able to to do the, the test and he's so understanding so like uh, instructors are there for us to help us like you know to succeed in their classes so um always explain the situation to them they are like always helpful and understanding. Wonderful thank you. Eleni go ahead I see your hand up. I would say um definitely talk to them as soon as you can like if you if you're noticing like there's an issue or you're struggling with something, um, just let them know right away. Don't like be afraid or be um, intimidated to try and talk to them. You know, they're, instru they're your instructors. They want to see you succeed and um, try to like try to figure out your schedule as well as theirs. If it's something that you feel like you can't explain very well in an email and you would like to further discuss with them via a Zoom meeting or something like that, try to set aside some time and talk with them because, I mean, sometimes it's a lot better to talk to somebody and explain to them face-to-face -face why you're having this issue or what the issue actually is um, than rather trying to explain it all out in like a seven-page email. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say talk with them as soon as you can the moment that you feel like you are having an issue or the second the issue comes up you know let your instructor know so that they can help you as best they can thank you 
Angela, go ahead. I just want to piggyback off of what <clears throat> she said. Um, I agree. Let them know as soon as possible because a lot of times if you wait, try to figure it out yourself, you can find yourself getting even further behind. Um, a lot, I know that my professors have been, went above and beyond to help me and sometimes um, they will, like she says, a Zoom call or you can go to their open office hours. A lot of professors have those um, and they will even walk you through it or give you some assignments to do or some videos to watch or something that will help you figure out what it is that you're trying to answer. Wonderful, thank you. Anybody else have any feedback on that? Um, Amanda did um, ask if they are, instructors are holding virtual office hours and the answer to that is yes. Um, my feedback would be kind of just like, even if you think it's super late at night, still send them an email because that means that you contacted them the moment it happened. Also, it's COVID. Teachers are keeping crazy hours and some of your teachers already keep crazy hours to begin with. One of my teachers is literally normally up until like 1 to 2 a.m. And then she wakes up at like 5 to 6 a.m. on average because she lives out on a farm. So I sent her an email at midnight saying, hey, I had a technical issue. I was trying to complete the assignment it's not editing i sent it right then and there so i didn't forget she replied to me in about 10 minutes and i replied back saying thank you and asked her why in the world is she awake at midnight because like it's tuesday it's midnight and she was talking about how she wanted to sleep the next day because school was canceled but like she was awake so and also um i just forgot my other part oh about the virtual office hours um with teachers' virtual office hours, a lot of times they want you to give them a couple hours notice and they want you to send an email ahead of time. One of my teachers, um, she has generalized open office hours and during that time period, if you shoot her an email, normally within like five to 10 minutes, she'll reply to you and you'll get on Blackboard Collaborate. Other teachers want a few hours notice or a 24 hours notice. And even if a teacher has set virtual office hours, a lot of them are willing to make an accommodation to do it like later or even earlier. Um, and don't be afraid to maybe attend your teacher's office hours every single week because that just means you have questions and they know that you really care about moving forward in class. Thank you. Eleni, go ahead. It's just an extra thought and it's, I guess it's uh, just because of my situation, but if you have other ways of communicating with your instructors, whether not just email, but in other ways, like for me, Marco Polo, then I would definitely suggest doing it. Uh, if there's other uh, sources that you can use to reach out to your instructors, I encourage you to do so. So, I mean, it because some teachers, you know, some teachers are really good and very productive about, you know, watching their email and, you know, replying to students' emails. Others, uh, I've had some instructors in the past saying, if you're gonna email me, you're gonna have to like, let, I'm gonna let you know it's gonna take me a couple of days to reply to you because I don't check it every day. So if there's an easier and faster way for you to get in contact with your instructor, then I definitely suggest doing so. Um, for me, yeah, sometimes I, it's easier for me to contact my instructors through Marco Polo than through an email because then they get it. It's, it, it isn't directly to their phones and then they can directly talk to me because everyone's got their phone in their hands every moment of the day. Yeah. And thank you that you pointed out something that I want to point out before we go to the next question, and that is, their faculty are not expected to be on their email 24 7 and answer those questions so while it's wonderful that they are at midnight one o'clock in the morning please note um, because that's one of the things i get complaints about and i want to make sure that we also say that faculty members i usually say give them up to at least 72 hours to respond to you and the reason i say that is because many of our faculty members work other jobs or at other institutions and so um you know they're they're trying to work and get stuff done too and and they may not respond right away with you however in this time people are a little more responsive as well and it's good to hear that too so um, i appreciate that um in the interest of time because i see that it's 5 50 and i believe we're going to six o'clock um i just wanted to um i have about four more questions left 
Um, there's one here that I really think is a good one to ask, and it is, what have you learned since you first started as a student that you wish you um, did earlier that you knew earlier? And I really like that because I think that it's important, especially if we have any students who are uh, first, this is our first semester. Go ahead, Angela. One of the things that I wish I knew that the school was running out laptops and hotspots. I spent a lot. Well, I didn't spend put myself in debt a lot by going and putting a laptop on my credit card. Um, and then a couple weeks into the semester last semester, I found out that they were loaning those. Um, so that would be great for them to know. Thank you. Anybody else want to answer that or go, go ahead, Eleni? I think the biggest thing is that since I've become a peer advocate, I've become more aware of the resources that are available, not just through Columbus State, but also through Central Ohio, just like in general, as far as like housing, financial wellness, uh, technology, transport, these things that could are very beneficial because I remember being a freshman being it having it being my first semester and not having any idea i'm a first generation student so i had no one to guide me through it so there were things that i experienced that i didn't feel like anyone could help me with and then little did i know that there were all these resources and all these organizations dedicated to helping students with these everyday college type struggles so had I known that as a freshman or as like a first semester student, probably would have been a little bit more beneficial for me. Wonderful, thank you. Hadil, I think you were trying to say something. I couldn't tell, I saw you take your mic off. Oh yeah, um, so join clubs that are available through Columbus State, like STEM club, LSM clubs, like LSM clubs for minority, it's really great clubs is actually provide advising um, from OSU to try like, you know, talk to them for like a half an hour and advise you on the courses and everything. So the clubs at Columbus State are really great. And then there's so much monitoring, so much resources. They will um, provide you with uh, like the available research that's going to be happening and everything. So like join them. They are so beneficial and you will get like, you know, really much um, like um, so much sources, so much monitoring from them. Wonderful, thank you. Anyone else before I go to, I'm gonna ask one more final question, then I'm gonna open it up for other questions. Um, so the final question is, what challenges have you or others you know overcome and what resources helped? And that also kind of goes into um, how have you navigated those resources um, in this remote environment? anyone so for me one challenge i face is when it's like with the writing like um like i don't really um good with writing I'm not really a writer so like uh like composition one and two is one kind of the hardest class i had to face but one thing that i use is writing center is actually um i really um used it a lot and i i pass all those two classes with a good grades because of them because i go like there twice a week and then they will like explain every step and what like what's are uh, how to organize your essays they will fix your first draft and see your grammar errors and the sentence structures and everything so yeah students the the writing center is the it's really helpful to use and um to go and it's it's free too so yeah wonderful thank you go ahead Eleni. i would say that before COVID hit when it came to things like zoom or teams or anything like that i had no experience with that no experience with that whatsoever i was not the most tech savvy person in the world um but i know that there were a few meetings held that kind of like help people figure out like how to work zoom how to work teams and things like that and so um because of these meetings i've been able to become a little bit more better I'm not skilled in it, but I, I'm better at it than I was when I first came in. At least now I know how to turn my mic on and off. So <laughs> progress. Yeah, 
Good. That's good to know. <laughs> um, Angela or BT, do you either either of you have any feedback on that question or? Um, the number one resource that I kind of didn't realize at first was my teachers. Um, I was so determined to do so much by myself that I didn't even think about asking my teachers. And this kind of goes to the last question as well. I really wish I knew in the beginning that it was OK to kind of slightly bother your teachers, that it's not always a bad thing if you know how to do it in a good way. Um, a lot of my teachers know me as the student who's going to ask those questions that you may that e sometimes I ask my teachers questions and they don't know the answer, so they have to figure the answer out themselves, which makes interesting topics in my program. A lot of the teachers talk to each other. Some of my teachers know who I am and they know the kind of student I am before they even meet me. Um, and uh, I take pride as who I am in a student because it took a while for me to get to this point. Um, but I really wish I knew early on and that it's something that I think every student should realize that your teacher is one of the best resources that you can have. And don't be afraid to go back to your teacher after you've left their class um, for a different class if you know they teach it. Like if you took anatomy physiology and you know that teacher teaches microbio and you really like the way they teach, don't be afraid to email them questions if they're cool with it. Wonderful, thank you. I see that Ty has her hand up. Um, and go ahead. Oh, uh, so there's actually two resources that were my my first one that I didn't take advantage of like I should have was the actual Columbus State website. Um, you'll be surprised how much you can actually find on the website if you take like just like take like about I want to say uh, don't be extra like I did. I took like an hour and I searched through it but like if you have that hour you can take that hour to like just search through the website to find different hidden things that you may not know is on there. Um, but I did that before I came back this this year I was like okay let me look through the website and see what I might have missed my first time around. And I was surprised at how many different things I found on the website that I didn't know were on the website before I got into school the first time. Um, another thing for me was the advisors. I did not take advantage of my advisors whatsoever. Like I will see them before classes started and when classes got ready to end, but I never really spoke to them in between time because I was just like, okay, well, I have my schedule, I have my teachers, I can do that. But you'll be surprised how much they can actually help you with that your teachers are not able to. Um, my advisor now, she helped me plan out at least three semesters worth of classes that I could take before my semester even started. And she let me know like, hey, you're taking this program, you don't need this class. This class is not gonna transfer when you decide to transfer or this class is not gonna help you get to where you wanna be. Um, there, a lot of the professors are actually, hard. excuse me, not professors, advisors are actually willing to sit down with you and talk to you like, hey, these classes you can take can get you this milestone in this way. And these classes, if you take them, yes, you'll get credit for it, but they're not necessarily going to transfer to where you want to transfer to, or you may not get the amount of credit you need to go to the next school that you want to. So I advocate hard on using your advisors because they work hard to make sure students are taking the classes that they need and not wasting their money. Um, yes, we have a lot of students may have financial aid and may not have financial aid, but for the students who are, don't have financial aid, you're paying for the classes and I don't want you to pay for a class that you don't necessarily need and you're just wasting your money being at classes you don't need to graduate. So I would say definitely take advantage of your advisors because they really, really help you in lots of ways. Thank you, Ty. Angela, did you want to add anything to that before we start closing up the session? Yeah, it doesn't directly answer your question, but it's in a general. Um, what I would say is get involved as much as you can with different organizations, programs, different places. You might think that, oh, I don't got time for that or I just can't add anything else to my schedule, but studies show that the more a student is involved, the better grades they get. And you may, you'll may you just make more connections and meet more people that could eventually help you. Great advice, great advice. 
So we are at our six o'clock mark and um, wanted to check in one more time just to make sure there's no questions that we um, that anybody has. And then I believe Jeff probably has some closing remarks before we sign off. So um, real quick, does anybody have any questions or final thoughts before we end the session? No. Wonderful. Well, first of all, again, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. This was great. I love this kind of feedback back and forth. And um, Terry just wrote exactly what I was going to say. You shared some awesome tips and information. And it's it's not just helpful for students. It's also helpful helpful for us as staff to know what kinds of questions or support students need.